Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. Have you got a poor Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. Time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving! Hello again, it's Wing Nation, presented by Dryden, by Dryden DR, Dryden DRF Racing Oils, and by Hercules Tires. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post, and Aaron, we're so glad to uh, talk sprint car racing, and and actually have sprint car racing to talk about this week. It's uh, it's, it's been fun to have the real product and, and uh, nothing against eye racing, but it's been fun to have the real product out there. It sure has. And it's been really nice to talk to David Gravel, to talk to people this week that are relevant to what's going on right now. We had a great time catching up with all of our friends throughout the pandemic, but it's been nice that we have some current events to talk about. When I think about where we're at with sprint car racing, Aaron, I'm going to use a phrase here, okay? One size fits all, okay? The way we're at with all of these states, there is no one size fits all approach to this thing. It is every state, every man, every track, every county for themselves. I've never seen anything like it, but fortunately, some of it's starting to trickle out there and we're starting to see some races, but it is a crazy time when we look at the different states across the country. It really is. I don't think any of us have seen this in our lifetime, and hopefully we don't have to go through this again, but I mean, not, it's not even just racing. It's like, all right, we want to travel to Florida to go to the beach. All right, what can we do in what state? How do you do? Like, it's just such a crazy time, but I'm just really thankful that we're getting to see some real sprint car racing. I am too. No one size fits all the way it is in the world now. And that's the way it's always been with aggressive hydraulics. They create purpose-built hydraulic cylinders to perform for customer-specific applications. They design and manufacture mobile single-stage cylinders, as well as multi-stage telescopic cylinders. No one size fits all with aggressive hydraulics, Aaron. Right, and they have hydraulic solutions for virtually every industry that uses hydraulic cylinders. They proudly design and manufacture all cylinders in the United States. You can check out a video of their story at aggressivehydraulics.com. And they're a proud sponsor of Ryan Newman at the Chili Bowl and all his short track endeavors. And speaking of Ryan Newman, he's going racing this week. Isn't that exciting? And NASCAR is getting back this week. Motor Racing Network is going to be on the air this Sunday afternoon from Darlington. And we're so excited to welcome Ryan Newman and everybody else back. So uh, it's going to be fun. Another step in Aaron. I think that's the way we're describing this. This is a series of steps. Last Friday night was a step for the world of outlaws. This Sunday is a step for NASCAR. That's what we need to do here as we deal with pandemic 2020. Absolutely. And I'm excited because it's almost like a sprint car race. There's no qualifying. There's no practice. It's just green flag. Here you go. So it's got a little bit of a sprint car feel to it this weekend. All right. So uh, I know this is a sprint car show. We don't want to get too deep in the NASCAR weeds. But think about poor old Matt Kenseth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No laps, no practice, been out of a car, and he's going to take that 42 car, and his first lap in that car is going to be at speed heading to turn one at Darlington. Very well, sprint car-esque. Absolutely, but it's very, I mean, it's Matt Kenseth. Yeah, exactly. He will be fine, and we hope you would uh, tune in to Motor Racing Network uh, this week as we do uh, bring NASCAR back. Every one of these things is another step in the process, and we need each of these steps to go well to get back to normal, back to sprint cars in the stands. Now, a guy that had a fascinating Friday night, I'm sure, is Dave Reap. He was with Dirt Vision there in the empty stadium in Knoxville interviewing drivers in the peace and quiet and when we come back we'll catch up with Dave Reed but first let's take you to that race at Knoxville where there was nobody in the stands because it was a great one that's for sure Ian Madsen the race leader with a lap and a half left here comes David Gravel it was on Dirt Vision Tony Bachoven and Johnny Gibson with the call it's our Dryden diesel all deftifying move of the week 
And now for the Dry Dean Deaf Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. David Gravel getting a run down the back straightaway to the inside. Your race is for the lead. Will there be a slider? No. She tries them in all in, gets over the cushion and losing the lead off of four. David Gravel takes the lead as they cross under the white flag. That Deaf Defying Move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf the official deaf of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Team Dryden. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high-quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. Welcome back. It is Winged Nation here, presented by Dryden, uh, by DRF Racing uh, Oil, and by Hercules Tires. And uh, joining us now via the Zoom line, um, we, we joked around just a second ago and, and said, man, Dave Reef, I was glad to see you working last week. Not only to see you working, but to see World of Outlaw Racing. Uh, welcome to Wing Nation, and uh, tell us a little bit about what that was like last Friday night. <laughs> Well, first and foremost, it's great to be on. I've, I've admired the program for for many years. It's uh, you know this this whole dirt sprint car thing has just seemed to be shaken right off again, and it, it's just such a wonderful time. Uh, of course, pre pandemic, but uh, you know it was, it was a great conversation with Ben Geisler and Brian Carter from the Outlaws about how they put this plan together with a COVID racing response and and how how the stars just aligned. And son of a gun, if it wasn't Knoxville and. I tweeted out right away. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I get to go back to where it all began, Knoxville. Yeah, but it, it was – and I listened, I, and I told him straight up, I'll, I'll do it for free. I just want to be there. That's, that, to me, is my – my whole world revolves around that, not the sun, around what goes on over there at Knoxville, and, and to be a part of that. And, then of course, to enter into a, a, a unique set of circumstances that, that everybody knows about without the fans and – without all of that, but this was a monumental production uh, by a Dirt Vision team that just continues to grow by leaps and bounds, a bunch of young guys that are turning into major players right in front of our eyes, and then, of course, to do it with people, you know, separated by a 1,000 miles apart. There was an additional challenge for me, you know, communications. Everybody likes to hear what everybody's saying right in the moment, correct? Um, I had could not hear Tony Bachoven all night. So, you know, I could hear John Gibson. We had some communication things, but listen, at the end of the day, you just rise above it and, and everything's good. It was fun. It was truly fun. Oh, my God. Wow. Well, Dave, we did certainly love listening to you. you. You talk about your background in sprint car racing in Knoxville. You got, I think you got your career start there. I know you used to announce there. Talk about your passion for sprint cars. I got to meet you years ago, and I was so, like, you knew who I was, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever because I was just starting out, but you knew that much about sprint cars. So just tell us about your background around Knoxville. I guess the cliff note version of it is, is a guy couldn't figure out what he wanted to do in college, went through about ultimately six years, went through four majors. The last one of those happened to be journalism. Uh, Iowa State actually was the the home of the Des Moines uh, Des Moines area ABC affiliate. The, the the studios were right on the campus at Iowa State, 30 miles north of Des Moines. So when you have to do your internship, you're right there. And uh, I walked into a sports staff with uh, an, an unbelievable man that also mentored Blake Anderson, and we know how much we love Blake Anderson uh, out there in the wing world. And uh, Keith Murphy just said, "Hey, great, it's a body. Learn how to run that camera. Learn how to do this. You're going to voice some morning sports down here." And then. Lo and behold, uh, the number three guy in, in, in the office, Jeff Grummer, who still owns a production company in the Ames, Iowa area with Rod Botholt, who was the number two, said, hey, you want to go to a race? I said, yeah, hell, number one, I'm here to get experience, too. I've never been to a race. I uh, grew up as a small rural farm kid in, in western Iowa and uh, just had never, ever heard of it. 
didn't even have any opinions. That's the, that's the big thing I say. You know, everybody always gives you that. Why do you like to watch cars turn left or go in a straight line? Never even had that opinion. And the long and short of it is, is he says, we're going to Knoxville. We're going to see the outlaws. And I went, ooh, outlaws. They sound, you know, incredible. You know, it's kind of weird. And he said, and I said, but, but let me ask. I said, why are we going to Tennessee to shoot a local show for Des Moines? I mean, that's how naive I was. Probably still am, but I had no idea about Knoxville, Iowa. 1992, two-day outlaw show, first one of the year. One night snows out. The second night, you know what the wind's like when it's blowing out of the north of Knoxville in April. It's, I was frozen stiff. I don't think I've ever been that cold in my life, And but you couldn't have pried me away. I mean, that's that's when the hook was set, and from there, the – you know, how do you do it? Just, just keep, just keep digging. Man, that is so cool. That is, that is really, really neat. I love, uh, I, I love hearing the stories, especially someone that's, uh, that, that's a broadcaster and, 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 and same college experience. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. And then we all just end up wherever we end up uh, through, through, through osmosis. Now, yeah. I didn't grow up going to the short tracks all the time, but uh, that is, that is really, really fun. That is for sure. So, um, that first experience in 1992 with the world of outlaws versus uh, maybe let's go back to Volusia. Okay. We'll, we'll okay. go pre pandemic. Okay. okay. Um, but let's, let's, let's think about the world of outlaws in 1992 as a young kid covered his first world of outlaw race and Volusia earlier this year as a veteran broadcaster stepping into the sport that, uh, that you love so much. Well, I think in 1992, I mean, it's pretty safe to say that Steve Kinzer won everything. But there was this young, uh, young hot shoe by the name of Danny Lasoski who had just gotten teamed up with Kai Forber at come the 92 Nationals. And uh, I'll always remember that race because it, to this day is still the 30-lap track record. Steve Kinzer did it. Lasoski came from the tail to finish second. And, and obviously being able to stay there 93, 94, 95, 96 before moving down to Florida and going to work for – Diamond P Sports, there's a little flashback for you as well. But um, really, you know, that forged a friendship with Danny, forged a friendship with Brian, who, of course, was that tall back then, Brian Brown, his his nephew. And, uh, you know, fast forward to today and in, in, in pre-pandemic in Volusia, uh, such an exciting time. I mean, now the guy's name is Shots. He seems to be winning everything. But yet here's this new offshoot. And, gosh, there's so many of them today, whether it's the Brad Sweets of the world, the Ian Madsons of the world. Logan Schuhart, I'm, I'm a huge – one of the biggest fans of him, David Gravel. Oh my gosh, this kid, the, uh, he is becoming so endearing to everybody, especially me to win the nationals to, to, you know, to win that, that, that Knoxville race the other night and Shuhart winning it at, at uh, Volusia County and the, and the dirt car nationals. It's just, it's weird. It, it doesn't feel like it's been, what do they say? 92, 28 years, but my goodness, it's what, what a ride. I don't want it to end anytime soon. Dave, you've gotten to experience all sorts of motorsports. So, yeah, obviously, we're with NHRA covering that for years. But what is it about sprint cars for you? What is it that separates them and makes them what they are? Well, I don't know if it's like your first love that you never forget. Um, certainly, the sport speaks for itself. Um, again, not having that opinion about race cars, I think, made it easier. Um, because I think when, when we were getting close to going to Knoxville, I, I kind of started to think about what I was going to see. And ultimately when I got there, uh, it was nothing like what I w ever would have expected. And then of course you start, you know, tearing through the layers of the onions and, and you realize what these guys are doing and how they're doing it and, and, and the little changes they can make the mechanics of it. I'm, I'm not the biggest car guy in the world. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot over the years, but, but I think that's a lot of it. And, you know, <sighs> Uh, the biggest thing that I really, really like about a night at the dirt track versus an ARCA weekend versus a NASCAR weekend versus an NHR weekend, and this is this is not saying that I don't love those. I love those as well. Um, but, you know, you go, you say hi to your friends, you get right down to work, you time trial a race car, you do hot laps, you run some features, and you have a man that stands alone at the end of the night, and then the next day you re-rack it, you do it again. It's There's just nothing quite like that. You know, just the rinse and repeat effort that you see. And, and, and I love the fact how you can be good on one night, you're not so good the next night. So there's always that constant flux. And I always tell people, too, and this is, again, not a knock on sprint car racing. It says you can go to a lot of sprint car races. Every one of the sprint car races you see isn't going to be a good one. Oh, but when you see a good one like you saw the other night in Knoxville, those are the reasons. That's why you keep coming back because you do not want to miss it. 
Dave, I sit and I listen to you, and and uh, for whatever reason, our paths never crossed. And I, I don't it, 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 because when I was talking about, it, I said, "This is weird because we're in the broadcasting business. We've all been doing it for years and years, and I've never crossed paths." And then, as but as I as I listen to you on Friday night, and as I've I've I've, I've followed your social media and everything, I think we're kind of cut from the same cloth, and that we both do our dream job. Okay. I mean, there's no doubt you're, you're just wrapped up from getting back to your dream. I'm all excited because on Sunday I'm going to Darlington to resume, to push play again on my dream down there with the NASCAR cars, this pandemic, this time we've been through, what has it changed your perspective? Has it, what has it done to your perspective on, on, on the sport and the racing that we love as, as, as guys that do what we do? That's a that's a great question. When you put it in perspective of of, of racing, I'm I'm curious how racing comes out on the other side of it. I'm certainly encouraged by by how good of a race we had the other night. I'm encouraged by all of of, of the i racing and things we've been able to do. I I, I think though that that quite honestly, racing is probably going to come out stronger on the other side of it. You know, we know our major players; they're still going to be there, whether it's in the NASCAR side or the Xfinity side or the truck side or with the World of Outlaws, but. You know, I, I think that this iRacing platform has has identified, you know, some new candidates, some new faces, some new names that, you know, you find the right funding for those kids. Uh, th- everybody tells me, listen, Poster, I, I'm sure you're this, I don't know anything about iRacing. The first time I got my hands on a simulator was out at the World Racing Group headquarters a couple of weeks ago. And I went from, how hard can this be to, oh, my goodness, this is not, you know, not even remotely easy. I certainly wish I could have had that seat of the pants feel like everybody else, but no, it, it, it truly is. And then of course, you know, watching Logan Schuhart be in the studio, uh, watching David Gravel be in the, in the world racing group studio last week too, seeing the looks on their faces, some actual perspiration growing. I mean, there, there's, there's some talented kids out there. And I think that this iRacing platform is going to help it. And I think racing will obviously come back pretty strong on the backside of this because uh, trust me, uh, as strange as it was to be in Knoxville and, and, and not see anybody, there's people that are itching, rearing, and ready to go to a racetrack. And uh, when that time is there, I think they'll come back and they'll support it for sure. Absolutely. We sure hope so. Dave, we talked to David Gravel on Tuesday, and he talked about, you know, how great of a win it was. But he talked about Victory Lane. He didn't use the word anticlimactic, but that's kind of what it seemed like. There was no fans. There was no photographers. On the emotional side, you've broadcasted a ton of races throughout your career. Well, you've mentioned it a little bit that it was strange, but what was it like emotionally on Friday? It kind of seemed weird. Every driver's interview, they said the same thing. They used the word eerie almost. You know, I, I wish I could come up with the word. I've been searching for it. There's just not one here I'll be all catch all word that describes what went on uh, in that situation. I'm sure it was the same feeling that went on in Park Jefferson when they opened that up in South Dakota a week earlier. I'm sure it's going to be the same way, you know, this weekend with NASCAR. It's just a, I don't know, when the race cars are going, you talk to a race car driver. You get butterflies before you get into a car, sure. But when the car fires up, they go away. And, and when those cars were, were at full pedal, full cackle going around that racetrack, your, your attention was exactly where it was, you know. It was the times between. It was the times um, – I know Tony Bachoven and I said it at the beginning of our, of our pay-per-view broadcast with Dirt Vision that I don't know that I necessarily knew where the back pit gate was at Knoxville, you know, to come in behind the Hall of Fame. Sure, I've been back there a number of times, hanging out late after national stuff like that, but as far as, like, signing into a racetrack and, and going back to the pit gate and then above and beyond that, somehow, somehow we slide through. I'm in the in the tower. Tony Bacco and I are talking about everything with Brian Dunlap and everybody from from World Racing Group, and and all of a sudden here comes Kendra Jacobs, and it's not one of these. Hey Dave, hey Tony, how's it going? It's like they don't think you're here. You're not signed in. If you don't get your head scanned with temperature, you don't go down and get your you know you're disinfected. They're going to kick you out of here. You've got five minutes. And I'm like, wow. Kendra Jacobs is like lighting into us, and and it's not soft shoeing it either. I mean. She's now in charge. You know, she's in charge at Knoxville, and she's yeah. given giving me the business, and rightly so. But to, to, to leave from the tower right then, and that's where I was getting with this, is go down the elevator, climb out under the Grand Concourse. I mean, there's so much activity that goes on down there on a, on a regular Saturday night race, let alone when the outlaws are in town, let alone when the nationals are there. And Tony and I walked off the elevator, and 
nothing. There was no concessions. Um, yeah, when, when David climbed out, you know, there, there's usually that roar of the crowd, you know, and you're talking to the crowd, as, as, let's hear it, David Bell, and nothing, not a damn thing. And so I can only imagine what it was like for him, you know, having been there, you know, late August last year, the last man standing, I, the gaggle of people that, I mean, I've been down there. I was down there with Lososki won for the hometown crowd, and I thought they were going to burn Knoxville down. So I know what that, that victory lane is like, and I think I counted eight of us. And, and trust me, we were all aptly social distance apart. And, but I will say this, uh, whether it was David Gravel, whether it was uh, Ian Madsen, who was so gracious in that runner-up finish, and Logan Schuhart, um, it was a different kind of interview. Uh, I think it allowed for some openness. Uh, not your typical stuff. Um, of course, being on the pay-per-view side of that, you know, we were able to to have some some free will and, and go a little bit longer with interviews and stuff like that. So in that regard, uh, that was nice. But yeah, I just I still haven't come up with the word. I don't know that I will ever come up with the word. But among the coolest things I've ever done. But yeah, for sure. I I, I told Brian Dunlap just yesterday on the telephone. I says. I don't ever want to know what trumps this. I hope that that's, that's this end of the, of the uh, envelope. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to describe this as steps and let's get this step done so we can get to the next step. And Absolutely. Kind of keep moving. Dave, I'm telling you what, what a pleasure to chat with you. Uh, like I said, enjoyed, enjoyed, uh, enjoyed all your work when I've, when I've, when I've caught you along the way and uh, this week at, or this year at Volusia, listen to you a lot down there and uh, then over at Knoxville. So we appreciate your time joining us here and uh, wish you the best as we continue on, not only with the Dirt Vision, the World Racing Group, the World of Outlaws, but also with your work in the ARCA Tour. Uh, definitely looking forward to all of it, getting reopened, going uh, out to I-55 this weekend. But what I want to learn, and Aaron, maybe you can help me with this, how do we become like the social media guru that he is? Because I, I can't sing like that. I mean, I can, but maybe pride. I don't. I want to get on your exercise program. Come on, man. Uh, Hook a brother up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think you need to aim a little bit higher, Dave, than this. I think maybe just a little higher with that aim, you might be better off. <laughs> I don't know, man. When you carry a nickname like the Postman, that's 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 pretty cool, man. It was great to be on this show. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, guys. Dave Reef, of course, you can catch him on Dirt Vision, and uh, he'll be all the uh, ARCA races once uh, ARCA gets back up and running. Great to hang out and chat with him. Now, one of the things, one of the aspects of the sport that is kind of getting up into running is karting and small car racing. That seems to be picking up pretty good, and our friends at Hepner Racing Products, they love their karting. From sprint to road racing to winged outlaw karts, HRP Streeter Super Stands are the number one selling brand for karting. There's all kinds of features to these things, Erin. Yeah, they have automatic electric lifts, rolling stands, and stackers so you can carry multiple carts. And just like sprint cars, HRP has tire racks, engine racks, bead breakers, and a whole line of karting accessories. For sure. You can find out more at www.hrpracing.com. That's hrpracing.com. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. We are Team Dryden. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation, presented by Dryden and by DRF Racing Oils and by Hercules Tires. want to remind you that Hercules Tires has their spring rebate going on. That's right. $70 Visa gift card on a qualifying purchase of four tires. You can go to www.herculestires.com slash spring rebate. All right, Aaron. 
there's something going on here, okay, um, in the uh, world. And we talked a little bit about it with the carding end of it, okay? Um, I've been following along. You know I'm, I'm buds with this Carolina Sprint Tour, the 305 racers here in the Carolinas, okay? And they're putting together a big race weekend uh, next week, uh, I think it is, at uh, Fayetteville, okay? Um, but they posted, and it's on our Facebook group, um, and, and we get we get into this a lot when we talk sprint car racing. It's like, oh, you you never talk 305s, and you're right. We we don't we we barely can cover the 410s, let alone a little bit of 360 racing, and then 305s. Okay, but one of the racers from up in the Northeast, and I should have written his name down. He posted about with social distancing, back game mentality, which is what we have to have with no grandstands. Is this not a huge opportunity for 305 racers? Because in a lot of cases, and, and, and we can debate this is right, wrong, or indifferent, okay? This is not for debate time. But in many cases, a 305 class, a touring class, pays their own purse with the back gate. Yep. So is this not a great opportunity for 305s, possibly? It sure seems like it. Like you said, their, their purse is usually a lot less, and – it's the more affordable type of sprint car racing. So maybe car counts will increase too. Yeah. You're not, you're, you know, the, the reality of it is, is that the, the 305 guy is likely not doing it to make a living unless he has Buku sponsorship along the way. You know, I mean, you've got all this money tied up and you're running for $600 to win. So you're not looking at it from that perspective. I just think it's fascinating. And the Carolina Sprint Tour, they have two race weekend coming up at um, Fayetteville next week. And they're seizing this moment this opportunity because they can be a back gate show. There's not going to be any grandstands allowed. They're allowing 10 per 10 people per car, but with the math, the way it works, it seems to work out so that the uh, three five guys are getting to go racing. And there's been some great three five racing in the state of Missouri. That's already opened up. So uh, I don't know, just something to think about as well as we roll along through our wing nation pandemic 2020 season for sure. Um, Finally, want to welcome aboard this uh, this week as well. Uh, we talked a little bit about them on Tuesday, but uh, Ford Performance is coming on board as one of the partners on our program. And Aaron, um, the they, they used to be in sprint car racing, the Casey Luna Ford, and they had some other cars. But uh, this time they've aligned with Tony Stewart and Donnie Schatz and, and, and that gang, and 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 it looks like they're coming in uh, coming in loaded for bear this time. Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, no one could deny how fast Donnie was as soon, right out of the box when they yeah. put that board in there. And obviously, Tony had been running it for a while. It's going to be really interesting. They have a, uh, it's a big push coming for sprint car racing. We're going to see more and more of them. Yep, we really truly are. And Ford has such a rich history in the sport. One of the things we're, we're, we're fingers crossed that pandemic gets out of the way and we can get production crews out. Uh, we're going to work on telling the Ford 410 story. So uh, we're hoping to be able to do that here on Wing Nation. But we welcome our friends, our new friends at, uh, uh, well, they're old friends. Uh, they're just new partners, I guess you will, at Ford Performance joining us here on Wing Nation. Of course, Wing Nation, you can follow us on our social media platforms, on Twitter, on Facebook, where we have a page and a group, a lot of activity on that group. Uh, lots of fun there. Lots of good stuff on the page as well. So neat, neat things there. YouTube has all of the um, all of the old interviews as well. So uh, uh, lots of ways to keep uh, keep up with each other as we roll through this uh, time and and hopefully get more and more races back. For sure. I mean, we're getting there. We're each each week we're getting a few more races and uh, hopefully it just continues in that pattern. One step at a time, that is for sure. We appreciate Dave Reef joining us here on Wing Nation. Uh, always great to uh, catch up with him and uh, see what's going on in his world. What a great guest. What a great interview. Great to get his passion for the sport. Speaking of passion for the sport, coming up on Saturday on Wing Nation on MAV TV, Linton Jeffrey joins us from right outside of the race shop with a cameo by his beagle. Oh, are you kidding me? You're going to want to make sure you check that out on Saturday morning on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit on MAV TV, 7.30 and 10.30. For Aaron Evernam, I'm Steve Post. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation, presented by Drydeen, by DRF Racing Oils, and by Hercules Tires. This has been the Wing Nation Podcast. Find Wing Nation on wingnation.com, Facebook, YouTube, or your favorite podcast provider. The Wing Nation Podcast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.